Thanks for watching Square Type. This is the Cones and Pyramid Supplemental where I'll show you how to make different sizes of these cones and pyramids. Your design might need a wide shallow cone or a tall narrow pyramid and my pop-up card videos didn't really cover how to make different sizes of these shapes so I'll do that here. I use these tools to make the shapes out of colored printer paper, um, but you can use any kind of paper you want. Let's start with a little bit about the cones. To give you a better understanding of cones without being technical, the base of the cone is, fl is a flat circle and the sides taper smoothly from the base to a single point at the top which is called the apex or vertex. The type of cone I'll be talking about is a right circular cone, which is, um, if you flatten it out, the apex would land smack dab in the middle on the center of the base. Here are three cones of various sizes, but when measured, the sides are all the same length at 10 centimeters. The height is really due to the angle of the apex. The wider the angle, the wider the base, and that makes the cone more squat. If the angle is narrow, however, the tighter circumference at the base and the cone is slim. You'll see the same goes for pyramids. The only difference between a cone and a pyramid is that the pyramid has four equal sides and a square for a base. The pyramid is essentially a cone with four faces. I'll be covering what's called a right pyramid, which just means that all four sides, all four faces, are equal in all dimensions. And when flattened out, the apex would also land smack dab in the middle of the base. Just like a cone, the pyramid sides can all measure the same length, but the height is really determined by the angle at the apex. Since it's got four sides, just keep in mind that a right pyramid's apex never exceeds 45 degrees on any one side. Okay, that's enough about the technical gloss. Um, let's just start crafting. My voice is giving out. Since these two shapes have very similar properties, they are basically made the same way. So I'll do a 90 degree uh, cone. Um, let's start off with a couple of, piece of paper, pieces of paper. I'm going to make them side by side, cones on the left, pyramids on the right. You just fold the paper in half. Then a little bit about the protractor in case you forgot. It's got crosshairs in the middle, um, the angles all the way around the outside, 0, 90 degrees at the top, 180 degrees to the right, 0 to the left. So I'm just setting the crosshairs at the corner of the piece of paper where the fold is, and then seeing that 90 degrees is the measure, I'm making a 90 degree cone, which is cool, so everything's great there. And now I'm going to make the gluing tabs. Just folding over that side, maybe a half an inch or a, a centimeter or two, and then folding it back over, I'm going to cut a relief for the point of the shape. It's a little diagonal cut from that fold mark. See if you see in the shape here, the point will need extra room at the top, so that's why I made this diagonal cut. I'll call it a relief. So I've got my my tabs folded up here and I'm just putting some glue on it. I used a glue stick and then glued it together and that's why it's all done now. So the cone is basically done and now just for um, my pyramid I'll fold it in half to make the four equal sides. I'm just meeting the two sides together here like this so they meet at the side there, flatten it out. Now I've got my four equal sides for my pyramid. Now to make the base, I want to make it um, the side to be seven centimeters long. 
So for the cone, the base is going to be a curve. So I take my compass and I make my curve. For my pyramid, I also set the compass at the apex here and make my curve, just like I did with my cone. The difference is on the pyramid, the edges of that curve are going to serve as my seven centimeter mark, side marks, that I have to meet together with a line. That's because the bottom, the base of a pyramid is a square, so um, I have to straighten that out. And I'm making sure it's at seven centimeters, so that's why I made that line. With the cone, I'm just going to follow the curve. Just one last thing here. Um, see the tab, how it kind of pokes out here? I'm going to snip off a bit of that tab so that the shape can stand flat on its base. I'm going to do the same thing with the pyramid. Just open it up and then kind of fold it open and then snip off a bit of that tab. So that's basically how you do it. Um, these are the general steps making in making cones and pyramids. I'm now going to cover making a narrow angle cone and pyramid. So setting the protractor at the same spot, I'm going to pick an angle less than 90 degrees, in this case 50 degrees, and then making a line from the point to that mark. I'll put I'll pinch along the line to make a fold and about a half an inch to the right of that I'll make a cut for my gluing tabs and then cut my relief from the point fold my um, tabs so they're facing inward putting glue on it and meeting it together then for the pyramid I'm gonna fold it in half to meet the two sides together So now I have a four-sided pyramid. And then I'm just going to take my compass again, set it at seven centimeters long, make my curve line for the base of the cone, curve line for the pyramid, and to make it a square base, I'm going to meet the edges of that curve together with a line, and then use that to cut my shape. Again, I'm going to snip off a bit of that uh, tab just so the shape can stand up. There you go. So for wide cones, it's a little bit different. So instead of using the edge of the piece of paper, I'm going to make a mark where the fold is. I'm just going to make a mark somewhere in the middle of the page. And then I'm going to use that mark as a reference point where I'll set my protractor crosshairs on and then I can choose my degree. So it's going to be greater than 90 degrees because it's going to be a wide angle. Um, I'm going to choose 140 degrees just so it's clear that it's a wide angle. So I'm going to join those two marks together with a line and then pinch it to fold, cut my tabs, cut out the relief for the point, folded in for the glue, folded my tabs in to face inward so I could glue it together, and then for the pyramid again, fold it in half to meet the two sides together. And then with my compass, make my seven centimeter curve. And for the pyramid, I'm gonna meet those the two edges of that curve together with a line so that my base will become a square instead of a circle. Again, for the cone, I'm just going to follow that curve 
and snip off a bit of that tab inside and now it can stand flat. That's how you make different size cones and pyramids. Check out my channel Square Type. Thanks for watching. Bye.